Tonight we wrap up our series on Idaho's salmon crisis. Just this week, Fish and Game closed a very short spring Chinook salmon season because of low returns. Fish advocates say Idaho salmon are on the brink of extinction, and Congressman Mike Simpson says the Bonneville Power Administration is going broke. But with so many different points of view on such a complex issue, is a solution likely? Steve Liebenthal looks at some of the numbers in tonight's Idaho Backroads. Use quick fish. At stores like Dale's Cashway along the Clearwater River, salmon season is big business. Even though seasons generally last only a month or two, owner Dale Haunts says salmon gear accounts for 50% of his annual fishing tackle sales. It's big business. I mean, uh, not necessarily for uh, sporting goods stores, but I mean, uh, airports, rent a cars, cafes. Uh, 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 hotels, restaurants, uh, I mean everything. In a good year, boatloads of anglers would be launching from ramps like this one on the Clearwater River, eager to catch a Chinook salmon. But this year, numbers are so low, fishing game closed the season before a single fish was caught. The number of fish projected to make it to the clear water is lower than the number needed for hatchery production. A very short season for 651 surplus Chinook on the Salmon and Little Salmon Rivers lasted only two weeks. The closures come in the midst of a renewed debate over breaching dams on the Snake River in Washington, which fish advocates say is the key to restoring Idaho salmon runs. Haunts is not convinced. Everybody tries to look at one thing and say, oh my God, there it is, that's it right there, and we gotta fix it. Well, it isn't that simple. Understanding the impact of the dams on salmon versus their benefits can be confusing when you start listening to the numbers interested parties share. Well, they produce less than 5% of the region's energy. The dams kill half of them, the adults going home. We have fish survival rates going across the dams in the upper 90%. They kill upwards of 80% on some years on the, the juveniles coming down. Uh, honestly, the biggest losses are out in the ocean. You know, I had someone actually come up to me and show me some numbers. They said, well, you know, the, the number of salmon coming back have increased since they put those four dams in. <laughs> really? I said, you're looking at some really strange numbers there, because that's just not true. And then there are these numbers. It probably costs someplace between 45 and $50 a megawatt to produce power at the Lower Snake Dams, all of which is sold for $30 or below. So the four lower snake dams are losing on the order of $100 million a year. Tony Jones has been studying the economics of dams and salmon for decades after being hired by then governors Phil Batt and Dirk Kempthorne to study the economic impact of removing dams. The BPA says Jones' numbers are wrong. My levelized cost of generation for the system as a whole over the next 30 years is basically $12 per megawatt hour. BPA came up with that number using what they call a levelized cost of generation for 30 years across 31 power generating projects. It is based on the cost of operating and maintaining the dams, but does not include the hundreds of millions of dollars BPA spends each year on salmon restoration, money Jones says is an integral part of the equation. So which numbers might those making tough decisions about salmon recovery use to make the correct decisions? This is one economist who's wonderfully respected but do people pay attention to him versus a big institution that has a lot of people that work for it, that has a, a pretty good uh, marketing machine that goes with it and so forth? You just have to see. John Freemuth, who moderated the recent forum on saving salmon and saving BPA, says those who are open to dam removal may lean toward Jones numbers, while those who are steadfast against breach are likely to listen to BPA. And with the current division in Congress, Simpson says reaching any kind of consensus will be difficult. You know, it took me 15 years to get to Boulder White Clouds Wilderness Fest in central Idaho. That would seemed like a pretty much a no-brainer. But the many people who we have talked to throughout this series have hope that Idaho salmon can and will come back, including Dale Haunts. If you can get everybody together and get to work on it, yeah, it, 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 it's possible. Steve Liebenthal, Six on Your Side. Governor Brad Little is creating a working group to come up with solutions for the salmon crisis. The Office of Species Management will be holding a series of meetings that will be open to the public and to see any of the stories we've done examining salmon declines and proposed solutions, go to sixonyourside.com and click on the Idaho Backroads tab. Now, Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval.